What's going on, guys? And welcome back to some more Earthbound in the last part. Uh, we got through Deep Darkness. And uh, we got to Tenet Village only to realize that um, we uh, had to do something in Winners because uh, there's something going on over there. Now we're going to call S... We're gonna not call our dad. I forgot I actually did this in, our, in the middle of our prison. But there, let's just say there's a place you can call your dad. Um, I, I, that's what I meant. I did not mean to do it twice in the recording. But uh, yeah, this is the second and last of the post-commentary videos. Because uh, in this recording session, as I explained in the last part, uh, it only recorded half the commentary. So, uh, I think I'm going... We're going to call a Scar Girls Press. I think I am going to change up how I approach the commentary recorder because the last part did go really well commentary-wise. Anyways, so we're going to call a Scar Girls Press and get back the uh, pack of bubble gum. We uh, put that in Escargo Express in the last video, but uh, anyway, so um, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to winners, and uh, now uh, the thing is, um, oh, I also realized I actually hit pickup instead of delivery in this part, so uh, yeah, we have to deliver it. So yeah, that's kind of the mix-up, but yeah, we're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get the pack of all gun and as I stand there looking for it. Yeah, that's the thing about doing post commentaries. Is like if, if you forget recording sessions, like um that's why I try to get it right on the first take, because otherwise I'd have to either post commentate this or uh just do this all over again. <laughs> anyway, so um Yeah, this is gonna be a longer video because let's just say we're gonna approach the Stonehenge base, and that's what the Eraser Eraser is for. As we uh, couldn't get past that in, in a previous part. Jeff, no, Tom, let's see, you got in color hard man. Right now Tony's missing. So yeah, Tony is also missing. So yeah, we have to go do with some investigation, and uh, it's me again. The two and my 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 husband left me to go play with Tessie alone. So we have to see Tessie again. So uh. Yeah, so, uh, we're going to Stonehenge Base. There's a few enemies that drop one free items, however, um... As the title of this video suggests, we're going for the Sword of Kings, which is one of the 128 items that is in the Stonehenge Base. It is the only weapon in the whole game who can equip. If, the, if you're gonna go for any one in 128 item, go for the Sword of Kings, because, um... It'll make the process easier because Pooh's attack will be raised, and like, even if it is a 128 item, but like, um... The thing is, like, um, I'll spo I won't spoil right away how long it took me to find the Sword of Kings, but like, um... The Sword of Kings in Earthbound playthroughs, I go for this every playthrough, and it's like... It can take anywhere between five minutes or a couple hours, and like, um... I'm not gonna exactly reveal how long it took me to get these Sword of Kings, but let's just say it wasn't exactly like five minutes. Because it is a 120 item, and like I said in early parts, a .007 chance they appear, so um... Yes, yeah, so that's kind of the thing about the Sword of Kings. We're, uh, these enemies are self-explanatory, we've already seen them before, so like um... We just have to find a way to through Winner so we can see Tessie again, so that's how we could like... We need the- we also need the Eraser Machine. Not necessarily- we don't necessarily need the Eraser Machine, but like... I'm not fighting three enemies, but uh... We don't necessarily need the Eraser Machine, we just need it more so like... What am I trying to say? We need it so uh, we can take a little shortcut, because we previously could not with Jeff. So yeah, we're only fighting one enemy here, and uh... A little trick you can do with Earthbound I haven't elaborated on already is that, um, if you are, you, it, when you win a battle, you have a little bit of invincibility, and you can use that to sneak by, through enemies, though other times it can back our pulse on level 2, you want to one by 2, 3 by 2, IQ one by 2, luck one by 2, luck one by 2, max DP one by 9, and, um, yeah, so you can use your invincibility to get, pat, get by enemies like that, so, uh, yeah, this is a 39 minute long part and I'm doing all the commentary, though there is a gonna be a little bit of a intermission time, but uh Yes, yeah, so I'll just I'll just do what I did in the last part and insert tracks in the editing. This is how I can basically stay on schedule with these videos and plus after I'm at a disc recording session, I'm actually gonna go straight to recording some more Earthbound because this is the last video I recorded in the session.
So yeah, that is uh, Tessie right there. We're running Tessie one last time. I guess uh, Tessie does also kind of remind me of Dory from Mario 64. Maybe a purple one. Though this predates Mario 64 and Pokemon also. Actually, um, wait a minute. It does, yeah, it does pre, it does predate. It predates Pokemon in both Japan and uh, the U.S. Because Pokemon debuted in Japan in like '95, I think it was '96. And yeah, Earthbound predates this in both uh, America and Japan. I had to double check my facts right there. I also think the commentary sounded better in the last video because I'm not using OBS to record the commentary, so like, it's not live as it is, so like, I think I'll just do- it'll, it'll take a bit more editing, but like, I think I'm gonna do this approach for now, and I'm using Tenacity to record this footage, this commentary. I'll just start doing this live, but uh, I can run into some syncing issues, but uh, I'll just suggest it in the editing. Because yeah, you don't want to- you really don't want to be like DSP, where he's put such low bar effort in his content. Like, his he literally advertises himself as raw, unedited content, and like, you really can't do that on YouTube because, yeah, that's about a part in the video. See, like, this is around the part in the uh, video where uh, I started to uh, realize my laptop speakers were out, and uh, it was around the time I got homesick. So yeah, this recording session turned into an absolute fucking disaster, and I'm gonna edit this out, so I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so now that we are back, now that we are back, um, basically, um, I just gotta resync this, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, we're back, we should be, uh, good for now, but, um, we are using the pencil eraser, and, uh, we're getting out of that there, so, um, I just have to do a little bit of editing to sync that commentary, but, uh... Yeah, this was a whole fuck show of a recording session. Both my headphones... I, I have my headphones charging as I'm recording this commentary, but, um... I guess people in some... I guess they kind of run away from me because we're strong for this point in the game. So, yeah, we're gonna do a lot of, uh... Guard it. We're, we're gonna basically guard or uh, we not guard ourselves, but like get away from these enemies because they just run away from us. See, the stronger you are, the the more pussies these enemies become. That's why you'd have some advantage in one one twenty eight challenges. You just don't want to get too high of a level, and I will explain more later. So yeah, now we are at Stonehenge base, and uh, there are a lot of the same enemies as before, and uh, thankfully I was able to dodge a uh, attack an enemy right there, but um... Alright, go back to the lab. It's, I've been waiting for you. My master applicant completed this eraser away from machine while I was trying to who was kidnapped. He felt like this. It was there, but it was helpless. Sorry about that. And we take this machine. And we got the eraser eraser, which is what we can use with Stonehenge. And he has another place where you can save, um, I have to debate about saving in these recordings because that's the reason I have to redo this commentary. And yeah, that's the thing that revives you, um, we've already been over this, but, uh, yeah, so, um, in the Stonehenge base, uh, I don't recommend going there until you're at least level 55 or higher. Because these enemies already step up in difficulty and a lot of them know PSI attacks and like they're a general like a uh, they're just general bad enemies and like um so yeah this is another one of those steps up in difficulties. If you have we don't have an exit mouse, but if you have an exit mouse, I would also recommend bringing one here. So yeah, we we don't need the Casey bat, as I said in the last part, it's not really worth it. There's the eraser eraser. So yeah, you wanna this um area that's a little bit of a maze, but I think it's like a combination of down and right. So like um 
I'll just kind of show you the way right here, but um, yeah, these are around the part you're going to start fighting enemies. Strong enemies at that. Yeah, look at this right here. Um, <laughs> these are the uh, Mook Seniors. They're like the lesser Mooks, only stronger. And guess what? They know Freeze Beta. I learned that in the recording. They know Freeze Beta. Who is also a character that gets weak to Freeze Beta, as you're going to see right here? So yeah, and he's also needs fire off because like when it can, when a character takes mortal damage, you want these dialogue to go as fast as possible. And unfortunately, I tried to auto fight, but it didn't really work. Yeah, I think it just uh, attacked Pooh, and like they were persistent in killing Pooh, but um, but yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, another freeze beta, three hundred six damage, and that's they got a. Uh, yeah, wait, I tried healing Omega, it didn't work, but we, we're just gonna go all out. You you kind of want to end a battle or mortal damage in us. I was I think over here I was kind of I was kind of hoping that the uh, yeah the battle would end before Ness took mortal damage because Ness and Pooh are going to be your healers at this point in the game. Like Ness and Pooh are both going to be your healers. Like if one of them dies, if both of them die, you could be in trouble. Because, uh, unless you have some items, Paula and Jeff aren't really healers. Paula's more meant for PSI, where, like, uh... And, uh, Jeff's more meant for, like, uh, mechanical stuff like bottle rockets. So, yeah, it's like, each character, you, you, you need a certain way to use them. Anyway, these are also new enemies. These are the, uh, Starmen. As you see right here. They have a 1 in 120 chance of dropping the brain food lunch. But they're, they're not generally super tough enemies. There's going to be variations of Starman we're going to fight later on that are going to be pretty annoying. But, like, uh, these are just a Starman. We've already fought other... We already fought a uh, Starman Jr. at the very beginning of the game. Boy, was that, so, was that a journey. We're actually approaching the very end of Earthbound. Like, we only have two Sanctuary bosses, including one right after this, which I'm going to do in the next recording session. Yeah, uh, we're fighting a less, we're fighting a Mook Senior. We just hope this thing doesn't use Freeze Beta, because that's the thing about these later enemies in this point, this late in the game, is that a lot of them are gonna know some of the same PSI attacks you know, whether it's Paula or Pooh. There's gonna be very late enemies that know Star Storm, so like you want to avoid that at all costs. Maybe it's not a bad idea to put up a shield with uh, Paula, which I maybe I should have done this recording. We're going to uh, heal Pooh. Actually, no. We're going to heal Jeff. Anyway, so, um, yeah, there's the, uh, another Starman. As long as we don't get back attacked, we should be fine. Anyway, so, um, we're just going to fight Starman. I don't get a brain food lunch in this video, so don't get your hopes up. Because, like, um, there's three enemies in Stonehenge base that drop a one on one training item, but, um, there's just a whole grind. Because, like, we're going to see lots and lots of level-ups in this area. Including, like, uh, Pooh's now level 45, including just now. So, yeah. We're, you, when you're playing through this area, regardless if you're getting the Sword of Kings or not, you're going to see a lot of level-ups. Because these enemies drop a lot of XP. And if you're grinding for the Sword of Kings like I am, you're going to see quite a bit of level-ups depending on how long it takes. You, might need, you won't see that many level-ups if it takes, like, five minutes. But, uh... I'll reveal when I get the Sword of Kings how long it took. Because, like, um, there's gonna be a whole montage of, like, me speeding up the footage and playing, like, some, I don't know, some, like, remix of video game music like I did in the Majora's Mask playthrough. Anyway, so I'm kind of doing some enemy manipulation right there because I don't want to fight three of those guys. I don't want to fight two of those guys, so yeah, I'm basically, uh, I'm basically doing some enemy damage and it paid off. Also, that's, uh, astonishing. So 
So yeah, I think I'm going to tweak some settings in uh, OBS in the next recording session. I think I'll just record the gameplay in OBS and the game audio on the commentary here. Because like I'm using, vo I use voice meter to make my microphone, to make my blue snowball microphone sound better. Because it's a mixing software that allows me to use like compression. These are new enemies. These are the top power robots. They're enemies that explode, which means we have to take them out last. They will heal and explode. When you kill them, they explode. So, really, any enemy that explodes, uh, you want to kill them last. And I should not have used Thunder Omega because, uh, let's just say it could have killed uh, the Atomic Power Robot and it could have done some devastating damage to us. Yeah, it's doing 3 HP to Paula because uh, it's of damage because, uh, because Paula has the Flame Pendant on. One of the very next areas in the game, the flame pendant is going to be very useful, and I just rec that's why I recommend, and it's basically why I recommend giving it to Paula. Yeah, we're going to use a freeze bait on this thing. Yeah, it exploded in a bit, so uh, yeah. Basically, uh, Ness and Pooh are going to be our heals, though Ness is, looks like it's, he's uh, taking some damage right here. Ness is now level 56, offense went up by 3, defense went up by 1, 2 number 1, guess went up 2, by 10 up 2, IQ went up by 2, luck went up by 2, max HP went up by 28, max HP went up by 7. So yeah, uh, Ness and Pooh are essentially your healer at this point in the game. Who also eventually um, learns um, healing... Um, the strong, the fourth healing. I don't know the Greek alphabet, but uh, where healing Omega has a chance of reviving party members. Uh, the sh the stronger one, uh, healing. Uh, he I'm just we're just gonna call it healing D, but uh, that guarantees it revives party members. <laughs> and Pooh eventually learns it. I think Ness learn. I don't I'm not sure as sure if Ness learns it. So Ness is also going to learn the strongest life up, which heals all party members. Yeah, freeze beta. Thank God the Mook Senior was defeated here, because uh, that could have been a problem. Yeah, what do you think of a 39 minute long video? Because, uh... That's the worst thing about post -com. If you record a really long video, you have to... You have to kind of be informative or entertaining for like 35 minutes. We kind of have to be informative or entertaining for 35 nine minutes because like you also forget what you said in the initial recording. So like, um, yeah, so uh, like, um, yeah, it's like um, I, I do have generally a good ability to talk for like really long periods of time because if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this gig of running a gaming channel. Pause on level 53, max HP went by one, max HP went by two. So yeah, if I didn't have that ability, if you don't have that ability, you can't really like do a gaming channel or a live stream or any of that. But like, um, I don't know. I took improv classes in high school, so it kind of does help. These are two star men, but uh, as long as they get double XP, it's like they're not really strong enemies. The star man super, we're gonna kind of the secondary in starting phase. That's the one that drops the Sword of Kings, and uh, you can defeat those enemies over and over and over again if you want the Sword of Kings, or you can be Chugga Conroy and get it first try. I swear to God, I've seen his, I saw his playthrough like five years ago when he replayed on his channel, like, um, he literally got the Sword of Kings first try. Because, like, I think, I did two practice playthroughs of this when I got the Sword of Kings. The first playthrough, um, the first practice one, it took me about an hour, but, like, um, the second playthrough, I got it in ten minutes. So, yeah, it's completely random. Yeah, this is the, uh, Atomic, uh, Power Robot, but, uh, yeah, you want to take those out last. Oh, anything that explodes, you take out last. It's one of the most common pieces of Earthbound advice. Because I've maybe beaten this game, maybe, um, I've played through it. I want to say maybe seven or eight times I've beaten this game. And, like, um, each time I beat this game, I even including this very playthrough, I've learned something new about the game. Like, um, gain the, gain the, uh, the, uh, travel, gain one of the, uh, defensive upgrades in Tucson. I never thought, I didn't mean you could do that. But, like, um, I don't know, Earthbound 
Mario like has like some something unique. It's the same as like Paper Mario for the N64, which I have considered a playthrough of. Like, I just learn something new about that game every time too. Yeah, you know, Starman A and Starman B. So yeah, just going all of them, these guys like um. So yeah, uh. We're almost out of the first area in Stonehenge base, but like this is a long area also. Like um there's two whole there's three whole sections of this. In the second or third section is where you can get the Sword of Kings because the Starman the Starman Super doesn't show up in the first section, but like um Yeah, so yeah, we are going to see lots and lots of level ups, including when I'm speeding the footage trying to get the Sword of Kings. But yeah, um, it, this this feels gonna be a while, so um, I'm just trying to keep it like as entertaining as possible while inserting um, while inserting uh, just re relevant context music. Like I'm not really including battle music, but like I'm just including the relevant music, but uh, so I don't make it, so I don't like make it I make this watch, so I kind of make this watchable, but like um. Maybe I should have cut out some of these battles, but like, um, I did pre-edit this footage, but like, um, you have to go with what you know. <laughs> so yeah, and Pooh's also almost dead, so, uh, we didn't get a level up right there. So like, I think I, uh, okay, uh, there's, that's, we can do one of these enemies. I think we're also almost out of this area. So yeah, yeah, Pooh's almost there right there. This is around the point I started healing Pooh. Sometimes you just gotta, um, because like, um, Pooh can be a great backup healer if Ness is low in SPP, which I am starting to get low in PP with Ness. So this is around the time I start using Pooh as a healer. And, uh, yeah. I'd say sometimes the lesser enemies you fight the better because the, the battles don't take as long because like we can because like um if you spend a really long time fighting the Sword of Kings you have to like an insanely high level you can insta kill these enemies. Paul is now level 54, offense went up by 1, speed went up by 1, guts went up by 1, max speed went up by 2, max speed went up by 2, power rails up by defense down which is a uh, not a move I use too often. I use defense down more and like I use like offense and defensive moves more and like when I play Mother One, even though I'm not as familiar with that game. Cause like Mother One play through that at some point, but like it's a very a lot of eight bit era RPGs are very grind heavy, and Mother One is certainly an example. Like um, I don't know. As much as I love Earthbound, I, Mother One, it has great a great soundtrack, it just didn't really click with me as much. I still think the game is good, but like, not as good as what came in the Mother series, because, um... Plus, some of the enemies in the game are just flat out annoying in that game. But yeah, Mother One is basically a grind session. It was common with a lot of 8-bit RPGs because there wasn't much content due to graphical limitations. Like, they made it very grind-heavy because, uh... Mother 1 was also a Famicom game. It wasn't even, like, an NES one. But, like, Dragon Warrior was like that. Final Fantasy 1 was like that. And anyway, we're out of the Stonehenge base. And now I'll also show you these new enemies. This is the, uh, St Starman Super. And this is the enemy that has the 1 in 120 chance of dropping the uh, Sword of Kings. Now, after this battle is over, I will speed up the footage. And I, after I speed up the footage and play music, I will reveal how long it took to find the Sword of Kings. Because the footage is going to be sped up by like 20%.
You can also use Jeff's spy uh, command to see if like they have not 129 item worth of drop in. Or, but it mainly just sees their stats. So like it's not I don't really find it too useful. But yeah, you're gonna be you're either gonna be here for a few minutes or a while. I would also recommend if you're playing a re-release, create a save state. Because uh if you get too high level, you can just load the save state. Hmm. Anyway, so um after this uh atomic power robot explodes in a bit, I will speed up the footage. So um Yeah, uh And guess what? This took me 20 minutes to find the Sword of Kings, which isn't too bad for an Earthbound playthrough. And I got all the way up to, like, level 62, I think. But yeah, this took me about 20 minutes. It isn't too bad. Jeff's on level 54, but, uh... It isn't very... It isn't very bad. It's, I, I expected this to take way longer, but, like, um... Maybe I lucked out a little bit, but, uh... Yeah, the Sword of Kings is, uh, the only weapon- I got to level 60, actually, but, uh, the Sword of Kings is the only weapon in the whole game Pooh can equip. And it makes using Pooh a little bit e a little bit easier, because it raises off him from 105 to 135, so yeah. Pooh, much like Jeff, can either be the worst member of your party or the best member, depending on how you equip him. Really, same thing with Sergei. He's like, depending on how you... Because, like, if you can use all four of these people properly, you'll have an easy time with this game. Like, your experience or knowledge or, like, knowledge of RPGs, like, it can, like... It can make this game either a piece of cake or, like, really, really hard. So, like, um... Yeah, so, like, um, because I've played RPGs before, like, um, I, my experience is that Earthbound's a game that starts off hard, but progressively gets easier the more you advance, but, uh, yeah, we still have yet to see the third enemy that drops the 128 item, and that's, uh, the military Octobot, and they drop the, they have one turn to drop the Metadite, which, uh, is the item that you can sell if we can get in the desert, but, uh, I've never- I didn't get the metadite, so don't worry, don't think- don't, like, put your hopes up too much, but, like, um... Yeah, I am a- I am at- I'm all- I'm borderline out of PP with, uh, Ness, but, uh... Yeah, because I- I wait- I pretty much wasted all my PP trying to get these sort of kings. So... Yeah, it could be a problem. It's another reason I recommend bringing an exit mouse. And, and though, yeah, I did, though fortunately I did get a PSI caramel and I gave it to Ness right there. So yeah, this is a little bit of a, we got three enemies right there, but uh. And 
uh, the Starman Super Speed. It's because we're high of a level, also we have high gusts, we can pull out smash attacks. Um, this is another reason I don't recommend getting too high of a level, and uh, is because um, it's when you reach a certain point in the game, because um, level 99 is the cap. I will explain a little bit more once we get to that period why it's not a good idea to level up all we can over here. Even though this is a fantastic grinding spot, probably one of the best grinding spots in the whole game. Because if it takes forever to find the Sword of Kings, you I've had playthroughs where I'm like level 70 in this area. And the star wearing a star man and a star man super, but uh I think interestingly enough you can get two sort of kings and I've seen it happen in other people's playthroughs. I've just never been able to get it myself. Get two sort of kings. There have been times I've gotten a one one and twenty nine the same one more than once, like the PSI caramel, just never the sword of kings. Who's now fifty calls now fifty-eight. Offense winner by two. Max speed by one, max speed by three, max speed by two. Who's not a little 52? Oh baby, offense went up by six. Oh baby, defense went up by five. Speed went up by one, guess went up by two. IQ went up by two, max speed went up by one. That rocks, max PP went up by nine. Who realize the power of healing? That's the, uh, that's the best healing in the game, which, uh, if healing Omega has a, uh, Partial chance of reviving party members that guarantees it revive party members and the starman super also know that move and they can revive other enemies Ness is now level 61 Vitality went up by one IQ went up by one max is up by 14 max pp went up by three Nestor has the power of Flash Omega. And we're almost out of this, uh, we're almost out of this next area, the second area, the second phase of, uh, Stonehenge base. If you didn't get an exit mouse, you can get one in this room right here. And I would recommend getting one in this room if you didn't get an exit mouse already. Because... Would you rather get the exit mouse or go the long way? Because, like, here's the other thing about getting the Sword of Kings. If you complete this area without getting the Sword of Kings, you can you no longer have any chance of gaining it again. So, like, uh, yeah, it could put you in a little bit of a tough spot if you don't if you don't have poop properly equipped. Like, you didn't get the Diamond of Kings and uh, the and uh, Delams. Like, yeah, that's another thing. I think this is the new enemy, uh... He has the military Octobok, they have the 1 in 100 train chapter door dropping the, uh, Mennonite, and they can steal items. However, uh, I forgot the wisdom of if they steal items, kill them first, so I just got rid of the Starman Super first. To be fair, Starman Super can, uh, revive Parnia, so it's like, pick your poison, which one you can kill first. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag right there, so... Yeah, so, yeah, this recording session pretty much turned into a disaster. Thank God this is the last video recording that session because I was, I was not stupid enough to let an already disastrous recording session go on for two hours. And I think this is the last enemy we found. All right, that's two Starman Supers and a, uh, what's his name again? I, I don't know. It's like, uh, oh yeah, it's the, uh, I still don't know. Let's let's see what it is. Atomic fuel supply. That's what it is. That no, that's healing move. Um. Oh yeah, the atomic power robot. That's what I meant. Yeah, two star man supers of that. If you can get three enemies on the screen, you can get a ton of XP. In one smash attack, and flat out kill these. Jackson level 55, IQ went up by 1. 
And actually it's being up by one. So, um... And we're going to uh, heal Paul with Ness, and uh, I guess we're going to heal uh, Jeff with Pooh. Use your PP wisely, kids. Okay, that sounded wrong. I, I take that back. But like, you know what? I, you know what I really mean by that. They're all the prisoners. Oh no. I can't see anything. Jeff, where is Jeff? Yeah, that's Tony, and like, apparently all of them are prisoners, but, um... Yeah, this is the, uh, you're much stronger than our intelligence together. We're not being prepared to that invention. The prophecy from the Apple of Enlightenment, the Apple of Enlightenment can be true, but you must not underestimate us. So, yeah, this is the, uh, Starman Deluxe, and if you have a multi ball rocket, just use it on him, and it'll insta-kill him. However, if you kill the Starman Deluxe, you have, and you didn't get the Sword of Kings, you have no chance of gaining it again. So, uh, yeah, maybe get the Sword of Kings before leaving this area. Ness now level 62, Max is by 1, Max is by 2, Paul's now level 59, Max is by 1, IQ by 1, Max is by 1, Max is by 3, Paul is now level 53, Max is by 2, Max is by 2. Anyway, so if you got the Sword of Kings, and you if you didn't get the Sword of Kings, you beat the Starman Deluxe, you, you don't have a ch another chance to gain the Sword of Kings. So if Pooh's not properly equipped, you could be in trouble later on. When you defeat the Starman Deluxe, the Stone is very steep operating, which uh, the prisoner is now free. I expected there'd be a 7% chance she would rescue me. I just thought it would be a good to meet Mr. Santa. I got to meet Josh Aaron and I'll see you. And uh, make sure you get that book Overcoming Shyness from him because. Yeah, we need that for Tenda Village. You need to talk to him to get the uh, book back. It's in the Onet Library. So we're going to go there in the next part. And I want to talk to Tony, but this guy's, Jeff, Jeff, buddy, oh me, oh my, you can't even rescue me. Oh, Ness, I'm Tony, I'm Jeff's best friend. I've known him for the longest time. Anyway, so what we're going to do, since our imprisonment is now over, I want to start the phase to soar as soon as possible. I'm sorry, thank you, thank you, don't worry about us. You've got important things to do. And so what we're going to do is, uh, the enemies are now gone. However, there is a long walk, so we're going to use the exit mouse. And I am going to cut it off for this part of Earthbound, so next time on Earthbound, uh, we're going to see what we can do in, uh, on Nintendo Village. See you guys then.